Hey everyone, Astro Sleuth here. Um, I'm gonna do something a little different, not a poem. I'm gonna delve in. I'm a amateur practitioner of astrology as well, uh, as well as a poet, and I'm gonna delve into love shyness and just uh, I might do a part, run into a part two with this, but uh, this is just uh, some astrological insights into my natal chart. Uh, from another anonymous uh, person online, uh, Bachelor91, and from myself and from Dr. Brian G. Gilmartin. What I do is compare his analysis with uh, my chart and see how it coordinates and, and uh, affects my chart. And uh, I will do a chart for myself, Astro Sleuth, for October 28th, 1979. It was a Sunday night, I believe, at 11.10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And uh, you can see the chart on the screen, all the different aspects and the planetary positions at my time of birth. And uh, my parents confirmed this as the, as the time, too. And I will start with Bachelor 91's analysis, then I will go into my personal analysis, then I will explore, lastly, uh, Dr. Gilmartin's analysis and how it ties in with my chart. And Bachelor 91's analysis goes like this. He says, Your Venus squares Mars and the Moon, both of which point to trouble and romance and love. Pluto touches your Moon and Moon-Pluto contacts. Uh, pop popularly known as Hades moons, tend to signify issues or pow power struggles with women. Uh, Neptune falls in your fifth house, and that tends to indicate someone who idealizes love interests uh, to an unhealthy extent, and aka crushes or oneitis. And also Uranus in your seventh house ruler, and not to be negative, but that tends to indicate short-lived uh, relationships or marriages. Uh, they might not even get off the ground. I had one uh, short-lived, if you could say it was a relationship, it was more friends with benefits uh, in my life, and that was around 10 years ago, 2005. I will get into that more later. And uh, coming from that, here's Astral Sleuth, my uh, personal analysis. Uh, number one, yes, Venus squares Mars and Moon. Uh, yes, a square in astrology definitely can be a conflict, especially when Venus is present concerning beauty and love life. Again, we have Venus, the planet of love there. And number two, uh, a moon-Pluto uh, combination. I do have power struggles with women. At times, I idealize them. Other times, they are just a source of frustration for someone in my position. So yeah, that definitely applies there. Uh, number three, uh, I have Neptune in the fifth house. Now, Neptune in the fifth house, it means I have had a fantasy. I have had some mean crushes in my li lifetime. Also, uh, I get, I tend to get drunk in idealism concerning the w women concerned. Uh, curiously, with the women I have contacted with, or I have connected with, rather, even as friends, uh, drugs played a big part in our recreation time together. I smoked marijuana with a few of them. Uh, Neptune rules drugs and marijuana. And this also means a rich fantasy life regarding sex and affairs can be present here. A.K.A. idealizing one-itis to an unhealthy extent again. And as both a horny introvert and erotic writer, <laughs> I sure do have that. Uh, number four, my Uranus is in seventh house again. My one friends with benefits, the only, in quotes, relationship in my life lasted about six months. But uh, we couldn't uh, just take it further or get it more off the ground, so to speak. Uh, just because we both wanted things from each other, we couldn't give each other. It was kind of complicated back then. And also, I do think women in general tend to view me as the eccentric one, at least. And number five, Saturn in the third house. This is the planet of restriction in the third house, ruling communication. I was born with autism or Asperger's, not diagnosed until I was 21. And of course, restricting communication. I've always been shy and retiring my whole life, especially around women. And this is also interesting and significant because this is also the house 
of siblings, curiously. I've always been less close to one of my siblings than the other, and uh, she is a female, my sister. I've always been traditionally less close to my sister than my brother. And um, it's interesting that Saturn is in a Virgo a feminine sun sign in the third house, and Pluto is in um, Libra, a masculine sun sign of siblings as well. Uh, the third house of siblings as well and I've always been closer to my brother so Saturn and my sister you could look at it and Pluto with my brother uh, in the masculine sun sign in the house of siblings I've always been closer to my brother uh, number six a stellium in the fourth in the feminine sun sign now this signifies introversion and extreme case and in extreme cases low self-sufficiency now, when I was in school, I always required help with my socialization and my learning disability, which was then proclaimed as organization, organizational skills at the time. But with the stellium and Scorpio, this could also bring great insights into the human condition too, how things work, what makes things tick, what makes people tick. So there is an upside to these placements, despite being very introverted and at times lowly self-sufficient. And Venus and Mercury in Scorpio is also a fitting position uh, just for expressing extreme sexuality and fantasy through art, a.k.a. I write erotic poetry, I make the pen speak. Uh, number seven, I have eleven, count total, of eleven, no less, fixed aspects in my chart. Now, Dr. Brian G. Gilmartin said something to the effect that a lot of love shy men may have an, over, an overrepresentation of fixed and earth elements in their charts. At least this is true in my case, and mine is no exception. Now, fixed lifestyles, sometimes love shyness, this can include, uh, they can be traced back to placements like these, and my stellium is also in a fixed sign, so there. <laughs> I would have to say, especially as I get older, I am pretty set in my ways, that's for sure. Uh, number eight, uh, Leo rising opposite moon in Aquarius. Yes, I do have a Leo rising, sign of the showman and leader. But I also can be detached opposite the Aquarian moon when these energies come together. This may help explain my autism. Uh, essentially, when I enter a room, I am often the center of attention, but not exactly in the showman way. But because of my eccentricities and my behavior tends to be a little off from the norm. Uh, that's the Mars Leo and Moon and Aquarius opposition working here. Uh, both placements work here. Also, when I enter a room, people don't see the whole real me, so to speak. Uh, but even with my eccentricities, I can put on a bit of a facade. Uh, when people get to know me, though, it doesn't last long, though. My eccentricities and peculiar way of life come out again. I guess you could say I'm more of a curiosity than a showman. As for the leader aspect, I have had people tell me that I lead with my humbleness as an example. And lastly, number nine, Venus square Mars. Uh, it can create disruptive tendencies in my relationships and dealing with women. And interestingly, uh, the, uh, Bachelor 91 also said in another reading that I do have an afflicted Venus. So that's a, ba uh, a bad spot for women as well in my chart. Now, uh, Dr. Brian G. Martin's astrological analysis of love shy men he studied, and this is my uh, input as it relates to me. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Brian G. Martin speaking. Uh, from shyness and love causes consequences and treatment. Uh, and he goes on to say, when I first began the data of collecting for the research upon which this book is based, I had every intuition of studying astrological factors in a very comprehensive way. Unfortunately, most of the love shy men studied did not know their exact birth times. In order for astrological hypotheses to have been correctly tested, I as a researcher would have had to have access to each respondent's birth time within an accuracy range of five minutes. Since it was not feasible to obtain this information, I had to make do with mere birth date data alone as far as most of the respondents were concerned. Briefly stated, my own analysis corroborated that of male. Hence, significantly more of my chronic love shies had sun signs of Taurus, Pisces, and Capricorn 
than would have been expected by chance. Similarly, the self-confident non-shies I studied had many more Sagittarians and Aries people among them than would have been expected by chance. Fire signs people. In addition, he goes on to say, the following generalization also appeared warranted. And then he says as well, number one, love shy men have a surfeit of planets located in the fourth, fifth, and sixth houses. This is interesting because in astrology this signals low self-sufficiency combined with high introversion inhibition. Now, yes, myself, I have planets in both my fourth and fifth houses. My fourth is full and happens to be in an introverted feminine sun sign. No less than four planets in my part of, for of fortune occupy my fourth, all in Scorpio, and yes, it is also fixed. My Venus, planet of love and beauty, is also here. Curiously, my Neptune, planet of fantasy and illusion, is in my fifth house of love affairs, sex, and dating. I do have a rich fantasy life in these areas, but have a very hard time bringing fantasy to reality, if at all. Even as far back as eight years old, I had I dreamed that the girl I had a crush on in my class at the time would be laying beside me. But I can now find expression as an erotic writer, and I'm using the Scorpio stellium to my advantage that way, and Mercury as well as Venus, both in Scorpio, sign of eroticism. Now, he goes on to say that number two, he says, the chronically love shy are significantly more likely than self-confident man, men to have their natal Saturn in the fifth or seventh houses. This is interesting because in astrology, Saturn is the planet of restrictions. It is often referred to as the negative teacher. The seventh house is the house of marriage and partnerships. The fifth house is the house of sex and children. Now, in this case, I say, my Saturn does fall in my third house, but it also affects my love shyness in relationships. The third is the house of communication and siblings, and I have always been retiring and shy by nature and was never particularly close to a female sibling. We're both good people, it's just that we don't have much in common. I was also born with Asperger's syndrome, so this too is Saturn talking and affecting my communication, including small talk. Now, number three, he goes on to say, Chronically love-shy men have an overrepresentation of Mars in Cancer and in Pisces. In astrology, Mars is the planet of energy and drive. Cancer and Pisces are regarded as, as the two worst signs for Mars because they are associated with inertia and energy wastage. Now, coming back to my chart, I have Mars and Leo in the first house, but I don't believe I am a natural showman. I may lead as an example of a disabled person, but that's all, so I've been told at least. And I once again, go back to point eight on my personal analysis. And he goes on to say number four. Love shy men tend to have significantly more fixed signs and earth signs in their horoscopes than do self-confident non-shy men. And in astrology, such combinations would be associated with inhibition and with stubborn and often intractable problems such as love shyness. Now, coming back to my chart again. Ditto. I have 11 fixed aspects in my chart. Fixed lifestyles, sometimes love shyness, can be traced back to the placements like these. My stellium is also fixed. I would have to say, especially as I get older, I am pretty set in my ways. I also tend to get fixated on certain subjects like sex, crime, death, and the occult. And even though there is a lack of sex and crime elements in my life, I still like reading about it, especially the sex act, and I've become a bit of an activist regarding that. I'm fascinated, Scorpio again, and as I've said, i found a way to express it through writing and activism. And he goes on to say, number five. Love shy men are quite likely to have a natal Saturn that is square or conjunct to the natal sun or natal moon. Many love shies have Saturn in the same sign as either their sun, moon, or ascendant. And once again, refer back to number two. I have then my third house of siblings, but I find it restricting for reasons I've already stated. 
And number six, severely love shy men are significantly more likely than non shys to have their natal Mars in one of the following four houses seventh, sixth, fourth, and third in that order. And severe love shyness seems to be associated with the natal Mars being opposite either the native's ascendant or the native's midheaven, give or take an orb of 10 degrees. And here we go back to my chart. Now, in this case, Mars is opposite my moon, so this applies here too. Now the feminine moon is in detached Aquarius, and the moon in Aquarius position itself in the seventh house of marriage and partnerships encourages platonic relations with women before having them as partners and lovers. Now, just about every woman I've met in my life, okay, they were platonic friends, the few that I did get close to when I broke the barriers down of shyness, okay. I pursued aggressively in my 20s, but all wanted friendship, so I had to leave it at that again. And now, he goes on to say, number seven. Severely love-shy men show some tendency for their natal Neptunes to be at or near their midheavens. Neptune is the planet of fantasy, daydreams, and illusion. Those with Neptune at or near the midheaven are believed by astrologers to be dominated or ruled by fantasy and illusion. Now... My natal Neptune happens to be in my fifth house. Love affairs, sex, and dating are all fantasy to me. And again, I have had some mean crushes in my lifetime. I also get drunk in idealism con concerning the women concerned. Now, curiously, the women I have connected with, even as friends, drugs, as I said, played a big part in our recreation time together. Neptune rules marijuana, but Moon and Aquarius in, set in the seventh house encouraging friendship again. This also means a rich fantasy life regarding sex and affairs that can be present here. And, as both a horny introvert and erotic writer, once again, I do have that. Now, number eight, his next point. Severely love shy men show some preponderance of planets, sun, moon, ascendant, and midheaven, in signs ruled by Venus, i.e. Taurus and Libra. Many love-shy men have at least two of the three major, astro major astrological elements, the sun, ascendant, and moon, in the Venus ruled Taurus and Libra. Okay, now, I do also have Pluto and Libra in my third house of communication and siblings, but Saturn is in Virgo here, a feminine sign. As I mentioned, I am less close to my female sibling. Pluto and Libra, a masculine sign. I also have a brother and traditionally I've been always been a lot closer to him as a male sibling. We have a harmonious relationship. That's Libra and Venus uh, working together again with the planet Pluto. And I share some artistic uh, traits with him too. Uh, it's up to debate whether that can be a cult or not, but I do share some uh, artistic talents with them too. Okay, number nine. Dr. Gilmartin goes on to point out. Down through the centuries, it has been noticed that the severely love-shy men, men in particular, rather, are substantially more likely than the non-afflicted. Now, this is interesting. To have been born during the May 16th to 19th period than during any other four-day period of the calendar year. And the star called Kaput Argal rules this four-day period. Traditionally, this star has been, had been called the Evil One, and the evidence collected from scores of astrologers, including contemporary ones, indicates that this star does appear to have a detrimental impact upon a person's powers of endurance. Men in particular who have had been born during this four-day period are highly likely to be excessively passive. Further, the Cup and Algol personality is commonly perceived as being pleasant but non-competitive and sort of unambitious. Now, uh, well I can't say uh, this uh, about myself exactly since I was born October 28th. However, I do have a stellium and a feminine introverted sun sign in that Scorpio. And number 10. He goes on to point to say, Astrologers determine a person's sign for 12 different items. 
the sun, the moon, the rising sign, the midheaven, the two inner planets, and the six outer planets. Each of these twelve items had been in some astrological sign at the moment of a person's birth. Now the severely love shy are more likely than the non-afflicted to have been born with nine or more of these twelve items in negative or feminine signs, i.e. Taurus, Cancer, Cancer, Virgo, Scorpio, Capricorn, and Pisces. And now, Scorpio, ditto. I'm a heavy Scorpio emphasis. And two planets, Saturn and Jupiter and Virgo. Food for thought. I've always got on best with Cancers, and my oneitis of seven years was a crab. I also have Curon, the wounded healer, and Taurus near my midheaven. So I, uh, I would be pretty close. I would say myself, I would come close to qualifying uh, for that point there. I have a lot of fixed and a lot of feminine, feminine sun signs in my chart. That's for sure. <laughs> okay, number eleven. He goes on to say, those born with Jupiter and Saturn conjunct, give or take an orb of ten degrees, have an above average vulnerability towards being or becoming severely love shy. This is especially true if the conjunction occurs in the 5th or 7th houses. Now, on this last one, I do have Jupiter and Saturn in one sign, but not a conjunction. Hmm. But, uh... And uh, the implications, he goes on to say, eventually we will know for sure whether these and other possible astrological factors correlate with severe love shyness. If there is a real and significant association between any of these factors and a tendency to develop severe love shyness, the astrological NATO chart will provide society, including medical and education functionaries, with a conspicuous clue from the very beginning as to just exactly which children may be at risk of developing pathological degrees of love shyness. Now, the astrological natal chart is set at the precise moment a person is officially born into this incarnate world. Therefore, if it should turn out that there is anything really worthwhile to astrology as a diagnostic and predictive tool, it will eventually prove extremely advantageous as such a tool in helping towards the uh, propitious engineering of home and school environments for the love shy prone, and this will serve to a effectively block love shyness symptomology from developing in the first place as well as all of the other social and psychological factors which are known to be casual antecedents for the development of love shyness and there you have it folks uh, if you search um, uh, Dr. Brian G. Gilmartin shyness and love you can download it on the web um, my natal chart is posted in the video picture, picture, and he also goes on in his book uh, about reincarnation and then love shy. It's a pretty interesting read as well. Uh, all right, there you have it, and hope you enjoyed. Uh, thank you, Astro Sleuth here, signing out. Have a good day. Cheers.